Hey, what is up YouTube and welcome to another edition of our Top Tweaks videos for iOS 10.2. Today, as promised, we are taking a look at the top appearance tweaks that modify the look and feel of your iPhone. Now, with there being so many tweaks updated to run on iOS 10, I've decided to split them up into categories. So that being said, in today's video, we will cover the tweaks that modify your home screen. As a side note, you can install as many tweaks as you wish in Cydia. However, I only suggest installing the ones that you like the best for two reasons. One, most but not all of these tweaks I'm about to talk about will work in conjunction with one another. I'll do my best to warn you about the red flags I've found when installing certain tweaks together, but long story short, I can't guarantee that installing every tweak in this video will work out as planned. Secondly, back to my earlier point, as a general rule, the more tweaks you have installed, especially the complicated or graphics intensive ones, the slower your iDevice will run. So again, only install the tweaks that you like the best and you feel you would absolutely like to have on your iDevice. Lastly, as stated in my previous video, you will need to be jailbroken and have Cydia in order to install anything I'm about to mention. If you need help with the jailbreak process, please check out our previous video on how to do so. So without further ado, let's jump into some of these tweaks. Starting off, we will talk about some pretty cool tweaks that add some animation to your device. First up, and the one you'll notice right away, is Evanesco. So this tweak simply fades your icons and your status bar and your dock when you're not using the device, allowing you to see your background better. If you tap on the device, it'll bring everything back. But like I said, when you don't use it and you don't touch it for a couple of seconds, everything will fade away. So taking a look in the settings app, you have a couple options here. You have the option to fade the dock and the status bar. And now if you turn these guys off, you can see that only the icons up here that are not the dock and the status bar will fade. And then lastly, which you saw me change, you have the seconds before fade, which allows you to choose between two and seven seconds. So if I set it at five, it's going to take five seconds before the icons fade. All right, so the next tweak you're going to notice is called Cylinder, and that is what is doing these animations when I swipe between my pages. Now, taking a look in the Settings app, you have quite a few options. You can enable it if you want, but the effects is where it really comes into play. You have a ton of effects to choose from, and the really cool part is you can combine as many effects as you want. So right now, I just have Zoom and Fade on, but let's say if I add a Spin as well. Now they zoom and fade and spin at the same time. So it allows you to create tons of various options for doing different animations between your page effects. So next up we have Aquaboard and this is not a new tweak by any means but it has been updated for iOS 10 and this gives some really cool animation to the background wallpaper when you're scrolling through pages. This effect can also be seen on the lock screen as well as the home screen if so desired and it is a pretty cool nice animation effect. So taking a look in the settings app real quick, we can see that we can enable it on the home screen or lock screen, then we can also pick a theme. Right now mine is raindrops just because it's kind of minimalistic. It's not overpowering and kind of distracting. Some of these other effects like heavy taps really seem to lag down the frame rate and I just think it's a little too crazy for me. But you can choose the frames per second you want to try to achieve. You can choose to turn on raining mode, which is better seen on the lock screen. This just adds some raindrops when you're not even touching the device. And then lastly, you can turn on splash on respring, and I'll perform a respring real fast. It's just going to do a nice splash effect right when the device is done respringing, which looks pretty sharp. So the next week we have is called Eternum Hives, and this brings the Apple Watch interface to your iPhone. Now this is an entirely different icon layout and it can be turned on or off via activator gesture to your original layout. Now taking a look in the settings app, we have a lot of things to configure. We can set activator gestures of how to enable or disable it. We have the option to do hives or classic mode. Now the hives option is when it's separated into different little categories or sections like this. The classic Eternum interface looks more exactly like an Apple Watch. So the Hive setting to me is just a little easier to organize your apps in different sections. Like you could put a social media section, kind of your most used apps right in the center next to the search bar. The next setting we have to configure is Tight Hives, which brings everything just a little bit closer, but this also resets your icon layout. So they are pretty dang close, but it still is in more of a Hive layout than a kind of just all over the place layout. So the next setting we're taking a look at is snap to hives. Now this is gonna snap to a specific hive and stay there when you're kind of just scrolling around. It's not gonna land right in the middle between two hives. Lastly, you have the option to use a dock. And again, if you select this option, you're gonna have a different dock than your default layout. So you can have different icons in the dock and it's not gonna affect your original dock when you're not using Eternum. 
So last week we're gonna talk about it's called gravitation, and this one's really cool because when you enable it via any activator gesture that you so desire, it's gonna let your icons take on gravity, and you can play around with it. It uses your accelerometer to create these animations. Now taking a look at the settings app, we have the option to allow app launching. So I just launched settings when gravitation was on. You have the ability to set which activator method you want to use. And then you have the option to hide the labels, which mine was currently on, and you can show the gravitation HUD. Now that's going to be what comes up right when you turn it on. It's going to show that little logo. And then lastly, exploding animation is pretty cool too. When you first enable it, your icons are going to explode at first. Okay, so next we are going to be taking a look at some tweaks that customize your springboard. So the first tweak that you'll notice that I've been using this whole entire time is called Reform X. Now this is the one that is giving me this custom icon layout with six icons on my dock. Launching into the app, we can see that you can set how many columns you want. You can set the size, which mine is at like 95%. Next, you can see that under home screen, you can set a custom home screen icon size. You can set a custom side insert on how far you want the icons to be away from the edge. Lastly, under miscellaneous, you can do certain things like hide the page indicators, and then under rotation, you can enable landscape rotation if you so desire. So one of the really cool things about this tweak that I wanted to mention is that this lets you make changes and turn it on and off without having to respring the device. So as well as turning it on and off, you can make changes to like, let's say the home screen icon size, and it will update without having to respring. Now the next week I want to talk about is called Hide Me X, and while there is way too much stuff to cover in this one video, I want to go over a couple key settings. The tweak Hide Me 10X is essentially like iOS 10's version of Springtimize. This allows you to change various things about the system UI, ranging from how the folders look, to how the home screen looks, to what type of animations you want. So for example, you can use springy animations which kind of jump in and out. Under the App Switcher tab, you can do things like disable the blur. So the multitasking background is actually in fact not blurred. So under the control center tab, you can do things like set custom blurs as well as set custom toggle colors. So when I scroll up, you can actually see these are red and this didn't dim behind it. It's actually a light white blur. So if I go to the home screen, it blurs behind it. And you can set these custom toggle colors for every single toggle that there is on the control center. Again, under the dock tab, you can remove the blur if so desired. Same with under folders. On the home screen tab, you can use a custom layout through this app, but I like to use Reform X instead, and you can also hide the page dots here too. Under the icon tab, you have a bunch of different settings to remove badges, to change the behavior, and to remove different labels. And so as you can see, there are a bunch of different settings to configure your system's UI throughout this app. Next, we have a really quick one, which is very common. It's called Multi Icon Mover. This lets you move multiple icons at once to different pages very easily. This even lets you move things easily in and out of folders. So if I select this and select a couple apps and I want to put them in this games folder, then I can just open it up and throw it right in. So the next tweak I wanted to talk about is called Multi Actions. This gives us the ability to easily group apps into folders. When we select a few apps, we are presented with this dialog box to easily put them into a folder and give it a name. So I'm just going to name it T for test, and it's going to throw it right into that folder right there for us. And so if I select this folder now, we are presented into the folder. We can do this the same way for getting them out of the folder. We now have an option to quickly remove them and move them out. So now they're back on our home screen. Within the settings app, we just have a few things to configure. We can have it ask for a folder name, which I really like. We can confirm to uninstall an application and we can confirm to move it to a folder. I just have everything toggled on. So the next tweak I wanna talk about is called Boxy Beta 3. This allows us to quickly change how our icons are laid out on our home screen and gives us this nice user interface here. We have horizontal padding toggle, so we can change how far it is out. We have a vertical padding. We have a side insert of how far it should be from the side, and we have a top insert here too, how far it is from the top. Now, one advantage with this tweak is we can create custom layouts and save presets. So I've saved a couple. If I save one and hit select, it will automatically apply that. If I swipe up again and then select my second one that I saved, then it will automatically go to that. Now this tweak requires us to disable Reform X, but it gives us a nice visual interface to customize our icons. It's really nice for playing around with different icon layouts. As you can see, they're updated almost instantaneously to how you want it set. 
The next tweak I want to talk about is called iWidgets. Now this allows us to add widgets to the home screen by simply holding down on the home screen where there is no icon present. It presents this dialog box which shows us all of our installed widgets and lets us easily select one and add it to the home screen. This can be moved around by holding down and putting things into editing mode and then solidifying it in place by pressing the home screen. Now as you can see this doesn't work perfectly with Evanesco but it almost is kind of nice just leaving the clock there and having everything fade out behind it. Now what's really nice about iWidgets is it comes with this free iWidgets app. Now if we pop open this app we're presented with this. If we just do sort by likes, we're presented with a bunch of widgets that we can easily install directly from here. So let's say I like this top one. I can just click the download button. Do I want to download it? Yes. And it comes up and says it's successfully installed. Now when we go back to the home screen and hold down, I'm presented with LP2. And I have this interface directly right there. So next up we have Anchor and this is what allows the icons to sit freely wherever they want. So normally they would have to be in a position like that, but Anchor allows us to place our icons anywhere we so desire. The next week I want to talk about is called Display Weather 10 and this places the weather to the left of our home screen right next to our date right there. There are no settings to configure with this app except for putting in your zip code which gets you your local weather. And lastly, as a lot of you have probably noticed, I'm using round screen corners to round the corners and edges of my device. In the settings, we can choose to disable it in certain areas, like for example, when we're taking a screenshot, it won't crop off the screenshot or round it out. And then we can also choose the amount of the radius on the corners. Now changing any of these settings will require a respring, but it's a really nice tweak overall that adds a nice aesthetic to the device. So now, as you can see, they are really rounded. Well, thank you guys for watching. This sums up part one of the top iOS 10.2 home screen tweaks. Today we took a look at some of the tweaks that bring some cool animation to your iOS device, as well as how to customize your springboard. Join us next time where we will be taking a look at some of the top icon and folder customization tweaks, as well as some 3D touch tweaks that add some cool functionality to your device. Thank you guys for your continued support. If you'd like to be updated for when the next video is released, please hit that subscribe button. And until next time, this is Tony, signing out.